This was my favorite fairy tale as a little girl from this book, 50 Famous Fairy Tales. This is The Goose Girl. There was once a queen whose husband had not long been dead. She had promised her daughter in marriage to a prince in a faraway land. When it came time for the wedding, the queen gathered together many beautiful things and gave her daughter a serving maid and two horses to carry them on their way. Just before it was time for the princess to leave, her mother called to her daughter and gave her a golden charm to wear. This charm, she said, would protect her as long as she wore it. The horse she rode, the queen told her, was a magic horse and could speak the language of human beings. The queen tucked the charm into the girl's dress and the princess and her maid rode away. As they rode along, the sun rose higher in the sky and the princess became very thirsty. When they came to a brook, the princess said to her maid, Get down, I pray you, and get me a drink of water. The maid, who was an impudent and lazy lady, answered, If you want to drink, you'll have to go get it yourself. I'll not wait on you. So the princess got down from her horse and going to the brook, knelt and down to drink. Alas, alas, she, she sighed. What will become of me? The charm in her bosom answered, Alas, alas, if your mother knew her loving heart would break in two. The princess mounted her horse and rode on. Soon she again became thirsty. She was a kind-hearted girl and believed no harm of anyone. So she again asked the maid to get her a drink of water. And again, the maid refused. The princess dismounted and knelt beside the brook to drink. As she did so, the golden charm slipped from her dress and floated down the stream. The princess did not notice it, but the maid saw it and knew that the princess was now in her power. When the princess was about to mount again, the maid pushed her aside and said, I will ride Falada, the magic horse, now. You can just ride my old nag. As the maid had already mounted Falada, there was nothing for the princess to do but mount the old nag. This she did, and they rode on to the princess's kingdom. They had not gone far when the servant girl stopped and forced the princess to change clothes with her. The servant now was dressed as the princess in the princess's clothes and rode the princess's horse. So it was not surprising when they reached the palace that the servant girl was taken for the princess and the princess was made to go to the servant's quarters. As the false princess sent her away, she said, If you speak a word of what happened on the way, I shall surely see that you will die. The false princess was given a royal welcome and went to dine with the prince and his father. As the prince looked out the window, he saw a strange servant girl wandering aimlessly in the courtyard. Who could that be? She's very beautiful. That is the, but a serving maid I brought with me, the false princess answered. She is very lazy. Then turning to the king, she added, I wish you would give me some really hard, give her some really hard work to do. Well, now, said the king, she might help the goose herd. So it came about the next morning, the real princess was sent out with Conrad, the goose herd, to look after the geese. Everything was going just as the false princess wished, but she still feared that Falada, the talking horse, might give away her secret. So she thought of a scheme to do away with that magic horse. Will you do me a favor? She asked the prince and smiled at him prettily. The prince, anxious to do anything to please his future wife, gave his promise at once. Kill the horse on which I rode here. He is an ill-tempered beast and will surely cause trouble if left alive. The princess did not like to have such a handsome creature killed, but he had given his promise, so he ordered a groom to kill Falada that very night. When the real princess heard of this, she wept bitterly and went to the groom. She offered him her only gold piece if he would fasten Falada's head to the gate through which she must pass on the way to the hills with the geese. She begged so hard that he did what, he, what she asked. The next morning, as the real princess and the goose herd passed through the gate, she looked up at Falada's head and said sorrowfully, Falada, Falada, thou art dead, and all the joy in my life is fled. The head answered, Alas, alas, if your mother knew, her loving heart would break in two. Conrad and the real princess went on into the meadow with the geese and sat down to watch them. The princess let down her hair, and the goose herd, seeing the beautiful locks like strands of spun gold shining in the sun, tried to steal a curl. But just as his hand came near her head, the princess said, Blow, wind, blow, I say, snatch the goose herd's hat away. After it, let Conrad run while I sit here in the sun. Let him not come back, I pray, till my hair is combed today. At once the wind blew Conrad's hat away, and he ran after it. He ran and ran, but could not catch it and return until the girl's hair was neatly braided and tucked under her cap. Conrad was sulky, would not speak to her for the rest of the day. The next day, Conrad and the princess started out as before. The princess again spoke to Falada's head, and the head answered with the same words. When they reached the meadow, the princess let down her hair, and again Conrad tried to steal a lock. 
But when the princess bade the wind to blow and whisk, away went Conrad's hat and Conrad after it. Conrad was sulkier than the day before and muttered and grumbled all day. That night when he returned to the palace, he complained to the king. I will not go to the meadow with that girl again, he said. Why not, the king said. Because all day she teases me, Conrad said. Then he told how the strange girl had spoke to the horse's head each morning and how it answered her. He told her, too, how she loosened her hair and then told the wind to blow his hat away. The king was puzzled at the story, and the next morning he went to the meadow himself and hid behind some bushes. He saw the princess loosen her hair and heard her tell the wind to blow Conrad's cap away. Then he watched her while she arranged her hair and marveled to see how it rivaled in brightness and beauty. After a time, he crept away without letting anyone know he had been there. That night, he called the girl to him and asked who she was and what, what her strange accents meant. I dare not tell you, the girl answered sadly. If I do, I shall lose my life. The king promised her that he would see no harm came to her, and he looked so kindly and fatherly that the girl told him her, his, her story. When she had finished, the king told her to dry her eyes and weep no more, for she would, he would help her regain her rightful place. Then he sent for the serving maids to dress her in beautiful clothes. When she appeared in her royal robes, it was clear that her story was true, for no one as a princess could be so beautiful and walk with such stately grace. That evening at dinner, the king told everyone he had to pass sentence on a wicked servant who had been false to his master and betrayed his trust. What do you think should be done to punish such a person? The king asked the false princess. He should be put in a dungeon and never allowed to see the light of day again, she answered, never dreaming the king was speaking of her own wicked deed. That's the way it shall be. You shall have chosen your own punishment. So the wicked girl was thrown into the dungeon and the real prince and princess lived were married at once and lived happily for many, many years.